and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. Today we're coming to you from Henrietta, Oklahoma, the decoy capital of the world, home of G&H decoys. <laughs> Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, Outdoor Oklahoma. From some of man's earliest days, hunters have tried to lure their quarry within an easier range. And even though methods have become more sophisticated today, well, the basic challenge is still the same. One of the most effective tools for this is the use of decoys, and it was perhaps the waterfowler that perfected the hunting style first. Man has actually used decoys for centuries. Native Americans would weave reeds and grass into the shape of a duck. Later, hunters would take decoys to the next level, carving them out of wood and painting them. Then, in what might seem as a step backwards in the development of the modern decoy, hunters realized that for attracting waterfowl, well, nothing quite beat the real thing. It was around the turn of the last century that market hunters began the widespread use of tethered live birds as decoys. Combined with unregulated hunting, populations of ducks and geese began to disappear. It was also around this time that people began realizing the imminent need for a conservation ethic to sweep across the country. As a result, in 1939, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service made it illegal to use live birds as decoys. Hunters were left with only one option, to go back to using man-made decoys. However, this time, new materials were available that were lighter and cheaper than carving wood. So, through the coming together of modern technology and necessity, the birth of the billion-dollar decoy industry was conceived. Today, waterfowlers are enjoying the most sophisticated decoys ever made and G&H decoys in Henrietta, Oklahoma have become an industry icon. Well, I am inside now at the legendary G&H plant in Henrietta, Oklahoma. And, you know, your, your, I think your employees call you Mr. G, your friends call you uh, Dick, and then your really good friends call you Duck. Yes, there's a lot light on the <laughs> Mr. <mystery>. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, right. Well, why, I am thrilled to be here. Um, and, uh, you know, tell me a little bit about just the, the history, because you've got such a rich, rich, deep history here in Oklahoma. The, the GNA started in late uh, 1933 when the federal migratory people outlawed the use of, of using crippled migratory birds for decoying purposes. Mm -hmm. My grandfather and my, and my dad were very avid hunters and, and they, uh, dad came home one day, I think, uh, my mother, they're not here now to verify it, but said, we're going to make uh, uh, decoys. Oh, what's a decoy? Yeah. You know, back back <laughs> in those times. So, so he, he made the first uh, Henrietta and uh, paper mache decoy by hand. He showed a few people in town, other hunters, and they wanted to make some. And I'll never.
forget this, my cousin had a new bicycle. Well, we were poor, didn't know he was poor because everybody else was poor. But <laughs> he ends up, uh, he'd drive by my house and antagonize me, so my dad made a dozen decoys. And there was a local hardware store named Trammell. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, he made it and traded this gentleman. He worked for two weeks making a uh, dozen decoys and traded for a Swin 24-inch bicycle. Really? Never, never forget that. And that was the start of GNH Decoy. And, and, uh, it grew and grew uh, you know, for the past uh, 72 years. Most definitely. And boy, did it ever grow. You know, the, the Henrietta, kind of that original decoy that, uh, that your dad made or, yes, or developed the mold for that, yes, that first one is, is literally legendary in, yes, in the waterfowling world. Yes, Everyone's heard of the, of the Henrietta. And we're, we're awfully lucky here in Oklahoma that, that you're still based right here, still family owned and operated. And, you know, I think that uh, it's, it's a rare opportunity that we're going to have today to really have you kind of give us a, an inside scoop as to how the, the famous Henrietta and all the other decoys here at GNH are made. Give me just kind of, you know, the step by step process because, you know, really to me it was kind of a mystery. The, the uh, starting off the hen redden was named by customers. Mm -hmm. They didn't. They had heard about G and H uh, decoys, and the best I can remember, uh, the uh, letter came in addressed to the hen redden postmaster. Mm -hmm. It said, uh, "I see." It said, "Please deliver to the hen redden decoy manufacturer." Oh, I see. see? Yeah, that's how it yeah. got started because they didn't know, uh, you know, who we were. Or what have you, and I don't think probably even had a phone at that time. This is right after the Depression. Well, that's how the hen redding got started. Okay. And it went from that to uh, from paper mache on into a little more modern plastic uh, thermal forming, and then we got mm -hmm. larger and added glow molding and started adding a, a array of new different species. Right. And it right. was uh, basically, it is still family owned. It's I'm third generation, and uh, proud to be in Oklahoma. And you see, there's you're talking about being here so long, uh, we don't have any place else to go. <laughs> you wouldn't want to go I anywhere want to go else anywhere, right. Exactly. So yeah. you start out with a mold, and you actually then press that, or is it melted into the mold, or There's what's two, the step? two forms, or three forms of molding we do. We do what we call thermal forming. Okay. That's when you heat a plastic sheet, it's already pre-extruded. Uh, uh -huh. You put it into a mold, heat it at a certain temperature, pull a vacuum, that sucks the part down like you're making paper plates. That I was see. the original patent that my dad got on GNH decoy. It was, it was stacked together like paper plates. Okay. okay. Then the next process is what we call blow molding, is where we actually heat the material, uh, heat it to say 380 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we blow a bubble, and the bubble, the mold goes closed on, air is induced, and it opens up, you have whatever part that the, that okay. the uh, uh, plastic, you know, the mold will make, and we okay. have many different molds. Okay, the, the part is molded, then mm -hmm. after the part is ejected from the mold, it goes to our treatment, which is uh, a, a, a dehydrogenation or oxidizing of the surface so we can get as much paint adhesion. Mm -hmm. We developed this about 50 years ago and has been very successful with it, because when it gets in the painting part of it, like this, this mallard, Mm -hmm. As we get into it, and it has it has all the the different colors on. Of course, the right. head here is molded in. This is one of our newest things. Uh -huh. That head is is abs is molded in. It's so the plastic's painted. green. Yes, sir. And that's okay. right. Now the bill's painted on, but this will yeah. last forever. It's it's, it's sure. It's, has an ultra body. It won't fade and won't have you. But then we go from that part. Of course, we go into the into the uh, into the packing and, and quality mm -hmm. control. We have a very good quality control. And they have the right in there that each person does up there to reject it. That sometimes causes a, what we call a factory seconds, which we put out in the showroom out here at reduced mm -hmm. price. And we're going to have quite a few of those around in September. We've got a pretty good amount of them coming up. Well, you know, the, the painting process is just fascinating because there's, there's a, oh, I can't tell you how many different individuals I saw handling each decoy. I mean, it's handled several times by different people that, that put a, uh, uh, a guard on it so that they, yes. or a pattern so paint that they can mask, paint, yes. paint, oh yeah, a mask. Paint, paint each different color by right. hand. Right. Some of them are even painted with a brush. Yes, that's where our labor intensity comes in on these decoys. We cannot get 
G and H quality by automating 100%. No. We automate some of it, but it's like in the eyes, for instance. These eyes aren't painted on like competitors. These are acrylic eyes mm -hmm. that take a special mold. They're snapped in into it to get the realism. You bet. It. Well, there's lots of different things that I think, in my opinion, set a G&H decoy apart from, from all the others. The, the most important thing that I'm proud of is it's 100% made right here in Oklahoma. Yes, sir. And, uh, and you know, obviously, U.S., American-made as yes, well. Sir. But, right. you know, the, the other thing is that you're... That process you were talking about, and I don't remember all the big words, but the, yes, the way that I'm trying you, to impress you. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you're doing it, but the way that you uh, you prepare the plastic so that it doesn't, uh, so that the paint doesn't flake, yes, and doesn't peel off right. uh, over time. That's that's real important to a hunter because these have got to stand the test of time. You know, yes, I, uh, your typical waterfowler can't go out and and buy. A new set of decoys every year mm -hmm. because your paint's coming off. Yes, um, so that's a that's a really really neat part of the process. It raises the price of the product where we're much, uh, higher than some of the competitors. But we say you either pay now or pay later. It just depends sure. on how you want sure. to get something. And our products are guaranteed. Anything that's done to them mechanically, you know, mm -hmm. uh, problem, they just bring them in, and we don't have it very often. But we are good about backing our product. That's, that's what great. we should do. Yeah. That's great. Another feature GNH has exclusively is the recessed bottom mm -hmm. that we put in. This is a special molding cycle, which, of course, adds to the cost one heavy. It causes the decoy to, to ride heavier on the water and, and gives it this action here. If it's flat, the sun expands, sitting out in the water, expands it, causes it to do this. Uh -huh. You don't want this to happen. You want this decoy to ride natural, which is like this, mm -hmm. fore and aft. Just another way that GNH or you know, beating the competition yes. by adding adding more realism to it. Yes, that that's uh, the hunters appreciate that when they, when they realize it.